if you have a small audience right now, or some of you watching this feel like you have a non-existent audience and it gets discouraging to create post content because no one's reacting to it, then this video is for you. Okay, so let me begin by sharing with you a story that I experienced uh, years ago. This was when Robin Williams was alive and I was very lucky to have uh, chanced upon a local event he was doing. I was living in San Francisco back then where it was like really cheap tickets. It was something like, I don't know, $20, $40. So my wife and I went to see Robin Williams live doing stand-up comedy. And of course, been a fan of his movies for you know, ever since I was a child. So I was really excited just to see this guy and how funny he is, right? Like always made us laugh. So I went to the event, it was called Raw. R-A-W. And there were like 250 people there. It was, it was a pretty big event. Um, and I was shocked at how many bad jokes there were and like truly cringeworthy moments. I was, I was quite uncomfortable for much of the event because I was feeling so embarrassed for him. There were a lot of jokes he was telling that just barely got any chuckles from the audience. Um, it just landed really poorly. And, and then he would, um, yeah, and then he would continue on and, and try another one and try another one and try another one. And sometimes there were good jokes, but most of them were, were mediocre to bad. And I'm like, this is Robin Williams. Like, I don't understand. Like, his movies are so, like, I, I, I found them genuinely funny. So later on, I did some research on this. Like, why did he do this? And it turns out this is called a work in progress gig. Like he didn't call it that when he was, I mean, he didn't market the event very much. He just, there was a, it was a very uh, light announcement on public radio. And <laughs> given that it's Robin Williams, there was now a line trying to get in. So it wasn't, it wasn't a big promotion thing. It was just, anyway, it's called work in progress gigs. This is where Famous comedians will do uh, test out new material, raw material. That's why the show is called Raw, in front of well, for them, small audiences. For Robin Williams, two hundred fifty people. That's that's nothing compared to millions who watch his movies, right? Or when he does a real show, like in Las Vegas or something, that he probably used to get thousands. I don't know. So this was a work in progress gig. And other comedians do this too. I heard like Chris Rock does this, like Richard Pryor used to do this. Anyway, this is how professional creators test out new material in front of what they consider to be tiny audiences that it doesn't really matter that they're failing in front of all these people. They still had to test out the material to see if, if it's only funny in their head or <laughs> other human beings actually find it find it entertaining and, and engaging as well. Same thing for you. And you know what, right now, you're essentially doing a lot of work in progress gigs if you have a small audience right now. Because you know what, if you keep going in the future, you're gonna have a much bigger audience. The question is whether you're willing to keep going. I mean, when I started, I had nobody. Uh, my friends and family thought I was weird starting to post on Facebook about business and marketing and productivity. And then, you know, I looked like I, I made it myself sound like I knew what I was talking about, or I was telling some stories that were vulnerable about myself. It's awkward for friends and family to see it. My colleagues, most of them found it a little weird, but a few of them started to like my posts. And, and then, you know, it, the word started to spread slowly, slowly, slowly. And eventually, um, Anyway, eventually my audience grew, as you can see today. So what I'm trying to tell you is that I hope you will appreciate the stage of audience growth that you're at right now. You might feel that you have a non-existent audience, but you still do have an audience. Look, do you have any Facebook friends? If you have a Facebook account, you probably have Facebook friends. You have an audience. I don't care if it's 10 Facebook friends. You have 10 person audience, right? Most of you have more than that. Most of you have probably dozens or hundreds of Facebook friends, or you probably have dozens of Instagram followers at the start. 
Well, that's an audience right now. Guess what? You get to test a lot of raw material before you grow and get bigger and embarrass yourself in front of even more people. Do you see what I mean? Like, is it easier for me to post content or is it easier for someone with a smaller audience? I don't know. Most of you watching this probably have a smaller audience than me. Is it easy for me or you to post content? Well, when I post content, I'm, I'm probably feeling more anxious and nervous, or I should be, because I'm possibly embarrassing myself in front of thousands of people, you see, when, when the material's not good. Whereas for you, when you test material, you're, quote unquote, embarrassing yourself in front of a few dozen people, maybe, maybe, whereas your future audience are going to be in the thousands or in the tens of thousands, and you want to have tested a lot, all of your so-called bad material or you know, the stuff in your head you think is good, the, the, the experiences you've had in your life that blew your mind, and that you're sharing it, you probably have to share it several different ways for people to, to, to see what way people really get, people engage with. You have to test a lot of raw material. And then noticing which of the raw material is really like getting positive reactions, even from your 25 Facebook friends, you got two likes. You got two likes for this post, whereas usually you get zero likes. Well, guess what? The one that got two likes is worth looking at and go, hmm, let, me, let me make sure I write this down so that I can improve it a little bit and reshare it again in the future when my audience is slightly bigger. So let me show you actually what I do, okay? I'm going to share my screen right now, and I'm going to show you the stages of con I'm just going to show you very simply two stages of content that I go through. So what I what I mean is this: I still to this day test out raw material in front of the smallest audience that I have, and then the best of that raw material gets posted to um, a slightly bigger audience. Okay, and then that gets posted to eventually the best of that slightly bigger audience material gets posted to the largest uh, audience that I have. So let me go ahead and, and, and show you what I mean. All right, I'm gonna share my screen here. Check this out. This, as you can see in front of you, is my X account, Twitter account. This is where I have the smallest audience. One moment here, let me make sure my video is working here, okay. This is where I have the smallest audience. Even though it says I have 4,000, almost 5,000 followers, many of them are really old. I, I've had Twitter since 2008. Many of them followed me in the early years and are no longer using Twitter. So I probably actually have something. Well, let me show you, right? I just posted this today, 39 views, two likes. Okay, let me show you earlier. I posted this, um, what is it, uh, a week ago. I only got 186 views and zero likes. This was posted before that, 141 views, four likes. 236 views, seven. Another one, 80 views, zero like, okay? Et cetera, et cetera. And I have a lot more. Um, uh, I, I'm just, I just started using the highlights section. If you go to my posts, I have a way more, I have, I have a lot more posts. I have a lot more posts going back years anyway. Um, and then I take the best, right? I take the, see, a lot of my posts get get zero likes, okay? And only a few dozen people saw it and nobody liked it. This is where I like testing raw material because some of my stuff still gets one or two likes, etc. I take the best of my Twitter and I bring it over to threads. Threads where I have 2,000 followers, more of my 2,000 followers are actually still following me. And so I take the best of my threads or X material, my Twitter material, and I put it here into threads. And see, this one already got eight likes compared to my Twitter, it gets, you know, often gets zero likes, right? This one got eight likes already. And then I take the best of my threads and I put it onto my blog, Substack, et cetera, including making a YouTube video about it. You're seeing one of those YouTube videos right now. Those of you watching this, on, I'm putting it on Facebook as well, Facebook and YouTube. Um, and and this, this video comes from the best of my written content and then I'm now just expounding on it in video format. And then I take I take the best of my blog post and then I shorten those writings and put it onto Instagram like this. And look, 119 likes, right? Look, 109 likes. 
103 likes. You see, that's way more than I'm getting on threads. Eight likes, right? Eight likes, three likes. Um, uh, let's see what else. 11 likes. And now on Instagram, I get, you know, 100 likes, 41 likes even, right? That's 100 likes, 119, 109, 38 sometimes, 178 sometimes. So this is how I, I do it. I do it stage by stage. And I recommend that you do the same as well. Look at right now, right now, where can you post your content with this, right? Do you post your content in different places right now? Maybe not. Maybe you just have one place. Maybe you just post it on your Instagram or on your Facebook to your friends. Okay. That's fine. Because you're like, well, my audience is tiny. I just post it in one place. Fine. That's where you test your material now. But as you continue growing your audience and maybe uh, growing on a separate platform, right? Let's say you end up using both Facebook and Instagram. Well, which platform of yours is growing faster? Usually I hear most of the day, most of the time now, Instagram for people is growing faster. So I'm like, okay, good. Then keep testing your material on Facebook where you still occasionally get one or two likes if some piece of writing or a video is good. Um, in their eyes, it's good. So you get one or two likes or whatever. Okay. Then take the best of your Facebook and put it onto your Instagram if your Instagram is growing faster because you want to put your best foot forward wherever your platform is growing the fastest. Okay. So uh, in other words, I like to say practice your raw material while you are still in obscurity. Well, before you get famous right? Wherever you are not yet famous, practice. And, but still, I'm not saying you should post it to like somewhere where you never, like ever, ever get any likes. Well, then that's not, that's not useful because you can't see what people are liking. If you truly are place posting somewhere where you get zero likes, you can still see the ones that get the most views. Let me, let me show you one more time here. Let me go ahead and share my screen one more time. As you can saw on my, on my X account, uh, even the ones that got zero likes, I can still gauge the ones that got more views. This one got 187 views, even though it got zero likes. It still suggests that the material was interesting for people because the, the social media algorithm notices when people pause and read or watch something for longer than other things that they're scrolling by. So if they quickly scroll by something, the social media algorithm says, ah, oh, well, I guess someone is not interested. That's why they scroll by really quick. But if they pause their scroll and read it, or they watch it, if it's a video, they watch for longer, longer than a few seconds, then the algorithm goes, huh, okay, well, this got someone's attention and they spent some time on it. Even if they didn't like it, it still shows the algorithm that there's interest. So even if you're not getting any likes, even the number of people it reached is a, is a metric to pay attention to. So again, let me just summarize what, what are, what's the next step I recommend for you is first ask yourself, are there several places that you currently post or could post, like for example, Facebook? And Instagram, or for me, in my case, it's X and then threads and then Instagram as a very simple, you know, three stages, right? Of, or several stages. Um, anyway, I, I, I don't want to get into the three stages of content creation. You can look that up. I have a video and a blog post about the three stages of content creation. If you're not familiar with that for me, that's a, that's a core teaching of mine. So you can look up that blog post or video, but the idea is to have multiple stages where you test out raw material wherever you have the smallest audience, but you still occasionally get one or two likes, okay? And then you take the best of that and then you post it to the other platform you use or the, you know, where you get more, you, you have more of an audience, more engagement. You want to put your better stuff there. And then if you want to do it even one more stage further, it's up to you. Where is your biggest audience and you take the best of this content? So, so I always think in stages and I hope you do as well. This is the, the, the biggest um, misconception that I see a lot of content creators have is that they, they just think in one stage only. They just think, okay, I'm going to 
work hard on writing and putting out a blog post. And then they get discouraged when that blog post doesn't go viral or doesn't get any reaction at all. And then, or they, they may make a video and they work hard on making a video or they just put, they put a lot of their emotional investment in a piece of content and they put it out there and they get discouraged. The more emotional investment attachment you have to a piece of content, the more at risk you are of getting discouraged, discouraged, less courage to make the next piece, the less, less courage to experiment. And so I'm hoping that this video has started to shift your mind to seeing content as much more experimental so that you, when you create, you don't say, well, this, you know, I'm expecting, this is brilliant. I'm expecting people better like it because I think it's brilliant or I think it was a profound story for me or whatever. No, no, no. Nothing is profound. Nothing is brilliant. When I, when I first put something out there, I'm like, well, it might, it might be good. It might not be good. I'm always like this, this, you know, there's that, there's that emoji. When the next time you see the emoji of like this, think of, think of me doing this, this is how I treat all of my content at first. The first time I put it out there for me, it's on Twitter, on X. I put it out there. I'm like, I, I, I don't know. It might be zero likes like I often get, but this is why I do it. I try to do it. Um, I, 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 I'm trying to stick with the discipline of doing it Monday through Friday, five times a week. I post experimental content on X and then I, I notice after a week, which of my five pieces got two likes. Usually, honestly, usually out of the five things I do once a week, several of them get zero likes, but then like one or two of them will get like one or two likes. Well, I take the one that, that was the best one. I put that over to, to my next platform, you know, et cetera, et cetera, threads in this case. Anyway, think in stages. When you create, detach yourself from the possible result. See it as, as, as an exploration. See it as experimentation. See it as play, if you can. See it as playfulness. And say, all right, well, I think I, this, this was an insightful thing for me. This was a good story for me. This was a useful tip for me. But I don't know if I'm, I don't know if I'm crazy today, right? I, I really am very shall I say, agnostic about my own brilliance or whatever. I'm like, I, I, I don't know. I, I might be totally crazy. It's not, that we're, it's not that we're crazy. It's just that we are in our own heads. We have the context of our whole life experience. When something seems brilliant to us, it's because it's making connections in our, in our brain with all these other life experiences we've had. And guess what? The audience oftentimes haven't had those same life experiences, obviously, because they lived a different life. You're a different human being. And so it doesn't create this kind of aha, brilliant brilliance that it did in your, your own head with all the different life experiences you had, you see. So that's why we, when you post, you have to go, well, this has a lot of meaningful context for me. Let's see if my audience has had a similar life context to find this thing really meaningful as well. Test look at all of your content as just testing. I'm going to test. And so therefore, if you're going to, to test, not knowing if it's going to do well, I hope that means you will test as much as possible, right? Because if you, if you, if you go, well, I'm going to, I'm going to work hard to write one great blog post a month, you might still be in your head the whole time. You don't know. See, this is the problem. You don't know if you're just in your own head. How do you know? Well, the only way you know is by putting it out there and seeing if other people think it's helpful, brilliant, meaningful as well, you see. So, um, so the, the mode of creation is at first the mode of prolific experimentation. That's what I wish for you to take on prolifically experiment with as much content as possible. No, not no. And, and here's, here's one more important secret I'll, I've learned. And then we'll, we'll end this video is if an idea is going to be meaningful to others, it can be quite unpolished, unrefined, and it'll still do better as a piece of content than something that you refine again and again and again before you put it out there. But it's the core of the idea wasn't that good. Really, really. Like 
if some idea was good, I can just riff on it on a video and I'm like surprised, like, wow, people really found that useful. Whereas if I have an idea that's like brilliant for me, but it's because of my weird life context and it doesn't make any sense to anybody else, but I refine it and I refine it and I edit it and I, and I put it out there, it, it still gets crickets, like nothing, like, like in the dead of the night, okay? So please understand that if you work lightly and, put, and create lightly and put out a lot of ideas, it's going to do your content creation career much better than if you work hard on any one idea. First, create lightly, put as much out there as possible, test it, knowing that a lot of them will get zero likes, but one or two of them will get one or two or maybe five likes, and then you can spend more energy and investment on the ones that got some react positive reaction. Think in stages and you will create more happily, you will create a bigger body of work and you'll be able to notice which aspects of your body of work are really making the most difference for the world. I hope this is helpful. I'm always open to your comments and questions below. And um, yeah, do, do let me know if any of this is resonating with you and, and, and what you're going to do as a result. So till the next time we meet, I wish you, um, I wish you joy in your create creation efforts. I wish you lightness. I wish you playfulness. And I wish you a detached from results joy in the process of creation. Thanks for joining me.